Hi, this is Robert Kiyosaki, and you're listening to Capital Hacking. This is the most important thing you can listen to today. I have a dream. With great power comes great responsibility. I could do this all day. This is it. Don't get scared now. They may take our lives, but they'll never take our freedom. Cinderella story out of nowhere. Did you know that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself? Welcome back to the big show. I hope I didn't over pop it. John, there's nothing like an episode that we learn from struggle. I mean, today, honestly, we have Jason Gennady, who was incredibly transparent, and there isn't too many shows, and Josh and I have done a lot of shows at this point, and I can't remember anyone that has articulated failing in business as detailed and as transparent as Jason has. So we are so grateful for that. And there are so many amazing nuggets that come out of this conversation. It's one of the more powerful podcasts that we've done. Jason's a thoughtful guy. There's a part in the middle of the show where you guys are going to hold on to a story about how Jason built a relationship with the world famous Pat Hyben, as we all know. Uh, If you guys don't know him, just look him up. And then he made a relationship 20 years later, 15 years later with the guy who helped grow Starbucks, which those are from great stories. I'm going to make sure you listen till the end. And somewhere in the middle there, you're going to find out how much this guy loves Ogmundino. Have you ever heard of that guy? If you haven't, wait till you hear about Ogmundino. He teaches you the wisdom of the scrolls. We'll teach you all about that in a minute. But I think you're going to love this episode. We're also going to dive deep into the work Jason's doing to help all of our companies, including Accountable Equity, where everybody should be signing up for the next Learning Grow on EOS. He helps us implement EOS. I, I I love the guy. I can't wait till everybody meets him. Get ready. Let's go. Well, you know, it's not every day we get to do an in-studio live on YouTube which is an oxymoron time with Jason Gennady. So John, tell us what we got going on here today. Uh, Well, there's a lot of fun going on actually when the three of us get into the room and we each are having a Heineken. Well, they're sponsoring this. Yes, Heineken is sponsoring. Cheers guys. This is Heineken. And it's the first time we're ever actually having beers beers. on the show. We need Brian beers. Not the Brian beers. We're having beers, but first time on the show. Beers. And, uh, and we have Jason Gennady who is, such an amazing human and i don't want to give too much away because jason give us a little background on who you are oh man thank you guys uh i've known you guys for so long it's fun to be here with you um yeah i mean my story is is, uh i guess my story is i you know grew up here in uh no no problem yeah it's some technical learn off live action this is the live action um yeah so listen you know i kind of got into entrepreneurship uh right out of high school Uh, i got my real estate license when i graduated and, um, you know, I didn't really have many other skills, but I just was willing to work hard and do whatever it took. Yeah. Um, and so I just kind of started trying to sell, got my butt kicked really well in the, in the, in the real world. Um, and then I started a company, uh, doing energy audits on homes and buildings, uh, called it Green It. Um, can you say that name again? Yeah. What is it? Green It. So like Renew It, but Green It. I like that. Yeah. You made yeah. it up? We did make it up. Yeah. Like um, that. me, two awesome business partners. Got zero percent credit cards, bought all the equipment, and just started Dude. begging friends and family to let us, you know, if let us do an audit on your home, energy audits. Let us do an audit on your home. If you like it, please refer us. Uh, and so it was kind of like that start. We were working out of my mom's house. We were in the, you know, the basement. It was like classic. Um, and we ended up growing the business really well. Um, but I was the last person you can convince you can grow a business too fast. And we ended up getting a couple big contracts. And one of them went against us. And, you know, we were talking earlier about core values and yeah. extreme ownership and we owned it, right? Like our, our team made a mistake. We had to own it, but we had everything in the business and we lost everything. And just to share a little bit of the scale, we went, what from, year was it? Yeah. What, how just, old, yeah. how many years did that take? Yeah. So we started in 08 and we had to close it down in 2016. That's a long, yeah, time, buddy. It was long, and we, you know, from 2012, we went from about six employees to 50 employees, and about quarter million revenue to five million revenue in 12 months. And so, wow. 
I, it, we didn't even know what we didn't know. We were just like, I was selling. I was, I said, I was so good at selling. I could sell things we lost money on. Right. <laughs> like it was just, it was bad, but I was so, um, blind to it. I thought everything I did was right. Like, cause we're making money, we're making money, but we weren't. Um, and so when the project went against us, we probably had about $700,000 loss that we just weren't capitalized to take. Um, so I just remember driving around my neighborhood for hours. Like literally I, I, all I was thinking, I can kind of joke about it now, but I, I just kept thinking I'm worth more dead than a lot with life mm -hmm. insurance. And it was, it was tough. And I remember driving. Finally, mm -hmm. I got home. I saw my wife, Carly was at the door mm -hmm. and I was like, all right, there's no delay. I, I, I started, walked up. This was, I'll say four weeks after our daughter Lola was born, mm -hmm. by the way. Um, so I'm walking up the driveway. She sees me and uh, I just tell her uh, straight up. I said, look, we got to close the business. Everything we have is in it. That's that's the truth. And I'll never forget. Uh, I might even tear up live here thinking about it. I I'll never forget. She just put her hand on my shoulder and she said, I trust you. Mm -hmm. And after that, everything felt solvable. So. Wow. All right. So we're all choked up here. Guys. Right. Yeah. A little bit. Um, And I'm going to let Josh take it in one second. I, I just have a quick because we all know each other so well. Uh, we got to go with a quick background uh, story here oh, yeah. from Jason. Good one. Because uh, most people don't become real estate agents licensed at 18, right out of high school. And uh, he ran into a guy, a very famous guy named Pat Hyben, yeah. multiple time New York bestseller for books, uh, one of the founders of GoBundance. Amazing guy. Crazy guy, too. Cra absolutely crazy. Good crazy love guy. Good, good, crazy. Good, good crazy. crazy. Absolutely love him. Uh, I'm straight. I'm they straight. Uh, uh, so Jason, give us a little of the story. Okay, I'll give you a story. And how you met Pat Hyben, the, the famous entrepreneur. Yeah. So this was one of those ones where it's kind of like, you know, we talk about core values. It's just kind of like default to action. So I was 18, maybe 19 years old. I had had my real estate license. And I remember I was in a Subway sandwich shop in Columbia, Maryland, right outside of where Pat Hyben's office was. And he had a lot of commercials at that time. I don't know if you guys have seen any of them. If you have, oh, I have. I oh man, they're like goofy on purpose, you know, and just, he was out there, but he was the most successful agent in the area. And I saw him and I saw him, I was with my buddies. I was like, guys, like that's Pat Hyben. Like, damn, that's Pat. And they were like, well, dude, we don't, we don't know who Pat Hyben is. Like, oh. <laughs> I said, I do. And so all of a sudden my gut was just like, I was just like, Pat. And I looked away the other way. You yelled Pat in his I did. I yelled it really loud. Subway sandwich shop. Yeah, he was in line. I just yelled his name and then I looked away. It's not a big place. There's nowhere to hide. No, there's nowhere to hide. Why'd you look away? I don't know. I don't know. Like, I looked like away. An Elvis Brinsley. Yeah, I looked away. And, Michael Jordan. And so he was. He was a Michael Jordan to me, right? Of real estate. Michael Jordan in Maryland. For yeah. Sure. So so I turned back to look and he's like looking right at me. Like he's knows it was me. And he's like, sup? And I'm like, oh, like. I, I froze and it was just in that instance i pretty much i was like i went up to him i was like oh you know i have my license all i want to do is learn i don't need to get paid i just i want to i want to learn can i come and do a free internship with you you spouted all that out after looking the other way yeah yeah he called me out and he, I love it. yeah I so you are brave yeah well I, I i i have to be right i don't have too many other skills um but yeah so from there i got in the office i kind of went through the interviews with his team and just got in there and started um doing all the stuff you'd have an intern do at a really busy real estate office. Okay. So that's a lot of outbound calls, cold calling, dead leads, dead leads. Dead, oh, dead leads means what? A couple months all ago, they three thought times yeah. and they haven't responded. Yeah. So that was my, but yeah. I actually got a sale off that book. Nice. Um, yeah. And, and, and Pat is, is, is will forever be my best and most original mentor because uh, I learned more about life with working with him. And one of the things he gave me this, uh, Tony Robbins, uh, program it was like a 30 day program, 45 day program. And he was like, here, check this out. And I think one of the, one of the kind of the, the reasons I've been successful or have created some success in my life is I'm willing to do the work. And so when he gave it to me, I did it. And I came back to him 45 days later with all the work done. And he's like, Whoa, you did. It? And I just, I found that I just got to do the work Yeah, and it'll, it'll get me to where I need to be. Yeah, I want to look two two things. We don't we love to get these these shows down to crystal clean, quick, high value, great you know great backgrounds. But we have so much we could talk to you about. So what we want to get to, at least I do, is today we know you as this world famous EOS implementer, 
doing some of the biggest clients, thankfully, were one of them. Yeah, you know, we get to you. be a client of yours. So that's today. Yeah. But we got to go back a little bit, brother, and talk more about the lessons you learned. Oh, yeah. I'm going to break down some capital hacking strategies you did early on at 18. First of all, you took the lesson out of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Had you read it before you met Pat Hyben? I was also very lucky. My my high school soccer coach had us read that. Richest Man in Babylon and Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Okay, right? Do you remember what you took out of that book that made you work for Pat Hyben for free? Yeah, I mean, learn, learn. Yeah. The wisdom rich, is more valuable than gold. Right. Rich, the very first lesson of Rich Dad Poor Dad is the rich don't work for money. Yeah. Yeah. They work to learn. Yeah. They and and that is the principle. That is the original principle. If you're listening to the show right now and you have the piss and vinegar, as people call the passion in your heart, and you want to leverage your human capital because you don't have much cash capital, there is nothing more rocket ship power. Then lesson one of Rich Dad Poor Dad called the rich don't work for money. Mm -hmm. So don't worry if you only have a forty thousand dollar year job or fifty thousand dollars, whatever. It, the rich don't work for that money; they work to learn. Mm -hmm. So you did that for Pat Hyden. Yeah, good choice, yeah. buddy. Good and, choice. And the other thing I realized was, you know, if I would have walked in there and said, "Hey, Pat, I need to make this and that," and if I was fortunate, right? I was young. I was in a situation where I could afford to not yes. make money. You have at to that leverage point. those moments. Yeah, you got to leverage them um, because they don't last for long sometimes. But right. uh, yeah, I, yeah. The other, the other thing I'll say about those two books is I grew up pretty much feeling dumb in school. I, I never really was good at any of the classes. I was always kind of just struggling through. Um, but when I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, I realized, well, I might have a chance here. Like if I can learn how money works, you know, maybe I'm not dumb. Maybe I just need to apply myself in, in kind of the, the learning about wealth. And so it, I just felt like I actually enjoyed learning when I got that book. That's a revolutionary point. Are you like many entrepreneurs, including us, that have ADD to some degree? Oh, yeah. Okay. That it does not work in high school or grade school. It doesn't yeah. work well. My son struggles with it in college, yeah. and we love him so much, and we're trying to help him. Because he just wants to, he wants to succeed, and it's, it's amazing. He's so smart, but it's just a, such a struggle. But here's the deal. Business like kind of requires so many layers of focus. Yeah. And guess what? They don't go linear. Yeah. I've actually come to the agreement. There's this group on YouTube and uh, Facebook called the Holderness family that do those joke movies. Oh yeah. They're great. I the funniest people of all we time. Right. They're into ADHD right now. And they they wrote a book called ADHD is awesome. And the point they're trying to make is it's awesome because it's, you know, uh, you know, it's outside the norm. It's, they have all this definition for awesome. But the point is, it is, uh, it is almost tailor made for entrepreneurship. Mm, you know yeah, why? Yeah. Because at the same time, unlike a normal linear job, like you say, you were the world's best student and you became the world's best engineer. Guess what? Step two doesn't happen until step one's done, mm. and yeah. step three doesn't start until step two's done. Guess what? Though in a business, you better be selling at the door. Yeah. Somebody better be figuring out how to bill. Yeah. Somebody better be figuring out how to create the product you created. Yeah. And guess what? At first, it's you, and they're all happening today. Yeah. And in Rich Dad, Poor Dad, it talks about that the A students are working for the C students. It's ironic. In my case, I was a D student hey, in high hey, school. Hey, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was close to that. Gave me a better charge. I'm 45, right. and I didn't know anybody. Now we know it seems like every diagnosis is ADHD anymore, but I didn't know anybody that had a diagnosis of ADHD when I was a kid, except for myself. Mm. And my mom used to chase me around the house. Yeah. With this, um, what it, what it, what are, what are those those drugs now? They the Ritalin. Ritalin. No, nah, there there was something back then. It's illegal oh, now. But she used to chase me around the house, and and if I took it, it would like flatten me out. And oh, oh my gosh, that's what my son says. Yeah. yeah. So so I I would run away from it because it I never take heard of me that from who I who yeah, I am. That's exactly what my son says. So I had about uh, maybe twenty minutes or less for tests, and so I never did well in long tests. But no. but but that's beside the point. You know, one of the things that you've already mentioned, JJ, and you know, we don't have too many people on our podcast talk about their failures, but mm. you know, we learn more from our failures than our successes. And you going through that story about building massive success, scaling way faster than you expected, thinking, you know, having an ego, you're probably young. So you yeah, thought yeah. you knew everything. And, uh, and then, and then there was an issue and then you had to close your doors and all your money was in that business, but that is going to be your rocket fuel. And it already is. Cause I, I know it is, yeah. uh, for your life. So tell us some of the lessons that you learned. Uh, I mean, also, by the way, let, let's give Carly a lot oh of props. Oh, my prop. gosh. Carly, you are a rock star because any woman 
that would do that for her husband, it, you know, that that alone, taking your husband's back when mm. things are not so great, um, man, is so important. And, and that that just that just speaks volumes of the of the character that you have, Carly. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I mean, it was I can't describe the weight that was lifted off my shoulders. Uh, now, I still had to do the work, right? Like, it was great, and and that was what I needed. But after that, all I did was, I, I literally, old real estate trick, I just went through my phone, and I called every single person in my phone. Mm -hmm. If there's anywhere I can add value in your life, I'm available. That's That was, wow. my, you know, and I just kind of rip, ripped through it. If I wasn't sleeping, I was calling people. Really? Yeah, I, I just, you know, I, I had to. Wow. I felt so guilty. Wow. I felt so much shame that I let so many people down that if I wasn't actively recovering and, and doing what I just, I, I, I was sick with myself uh, and it took a long time. I think that's when they said, like, Oh, fail fast. And then it's great. It's like, <laughs> it, it, I, I felt horrible. I had, I, I had so many limiting beliefs. I didn't know I allowed into my psyche um, from that. And it took me a long time to kind of, uh, you know, and, and, the story we we're talking about Howard Behar, the star, but he really helped me unlock. It. Well, that that's a different story. Yeah. So when you're done, I want yeah, you yeah. to share the whole, yeah, that whole story oh, yeah. as a case study. Yeah. So tell us about that. Who is that guy, by the way? We don't, yeah. I'm off the top of my head. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you the lessons. Cause you did ask me the lessons. I think a couple of lessons is don't buy your own bullshit and know the facts. Mm. There's a lot of times I was saying, ah, oh, well, this is looking good or what this pipeline, you know, all the things that could happen. I was counting on, they would happen. Um, versus really saying, Hey, is this, is this real? You know, or am I just kind of buying my own, you know, bullshit? Um, we, what I'll say is we had an amazing team. What I'm most proud of is a culture that we built when we did make the announcement. And this was like, <laughs> I forgot to say this. This was like five days before Christmas. <laughs> oh, it was like, it was as bad as it gets. But I saw the kind of the leadership level of our team. They were helping the other team members write their resumes, get ready for interviews. It was, it was, it was beautiful. Um, but I think the other thing is like, you got to know your numbers. I didn't know my numbers. I thought it was like fun to say like, oh, I'm not the finance guy. Like my partner handles that. I just, I thought it was like, cool, you know? And it was like, no asshole. Like if you don't know your numbers, you don't know your business. Um, that was a big lesson. Um, and I, I think the, the other thing I'll kind of cap it off with is that we, we weren't really in a market we were in a program we had a couple of utility contracts and so those changed like they reduced the rates they paid us like we were so subject to so many outside circumstances that we we didn't i didn't realize how vulnerable we were so yeah i mean tons of lessons wow yeah yeah i don't yeah and, and to skip the whole business model though i do want to get to that big yeah. story uh, I love the idea that you, your here's your go-to-market strategy that I picked up from you. You leveraged 0% credit cards yeah. to buy whatever equipment you needed. Then you did case studies yeah. and used case studies and referrals to get your business going. And then, you know, you, you know, you just fell in love with selling. Yeah. Sounds like that's, and by the way, selling typically solves a lot of problems, yeah. but in your case, you're saying you were running it without recognition of the revenue and yeah. the profit. And you had, yeah. a, you had basically because of what you just said, right. They had changed yeah. the profitability of each sale. Yeah. Cause you weren't in charge of that. I was like, uh, there's that story, the merchant who loses money on every sale, but he says, don't worry, I'll make it up with volume. volume that's yeah. it. I was like, don't worry. Like we'll grow out of this. And like, if I would have really looked at the math and we had a, I'll give him a shout out. His name is Brad Eisenberg. He uh, kind of shifted into like our COO. And he is the, the reason why we were able to bring it in for, you know, at least kind of unroll, uh, un, what do you call it? Like unwrap things and in, in a, in a, a semblance okay. of a way. But he looked at me, I remember he looked at me, he's like, Jason, like, look at these numbers. Like every time you sell one of these, we lose money. And I was mm. like, wow. Oh, you know, it was just, it was, yeah, it was a total. Where did, where did he end up? Cause he seems like a great guy. Yeah. So he's, he's got a, a really cool business where he helps other companies scale. So he comes in and helps them with their operations and, as a CEO, like an internal guy uh, or a consultant? A, a consultant. I don't know what he would call himself exactly, but what the way we kind of now make light of it is like us going out of business was the best thing that ever happened for the industry. A couple of our teammates are now running state programs. They're running, uh, you know, local utility energy pro. It's like, wow. Yeah. Yeah. What a wow. Proud. Congratulations. A lot of pride in a, in a, in a failure there. You know, and a lot of times, you know, there's a few things that I, cause I, I coached amateur and professional athletes mm. for over 20 years 
as a strength conditioning coach. Mm -hmm. I also coached about 18 plus seasons of youth sports uh, in all different sports. But I always told our athletes, um, you know, great athletes have a short memory Mm -hmm. because sports is a game of mistakes. Yeah. So if you're playing baseball and you're a shortstop or wherever you are on the field, that that ball gets by you. That's going to happen. Yeah. But the best athletes, they shake it off fast yeah. and they look for the next one. And when you fail in business, it's it, that is also something that's like you just have to tell yourself nothing happens to me. Everything happens for me. Yeah. And you you have to pivot with that thought and move. Yeah. Kind of like that book, Who Moved My Cheese, hmm. where it's like that cheese ain't there anymore, bro. So you got to you got to <laughs> right, you, right. you, you can't go back to that spot yeah. because the cheese has moved. So you need to now be on the hunt to find where that cheese went. So, yeah, yeah I mean, for, for I want to build off of that and have you take all that because he's right. You moved, you know, you have a short memory for the bad. You build on the bad. Talk to us today how that's informing what you're doing now for a living. Yeah. Well, and I'll, I'll admit, I wish I could have uh, had a short memory. You know, I think that's looking back. Obviously, I wish I would have. I, I took a long time to kind of get out of my own way from that. So um, I love the theory. I just, I, I, you know, it took me longer than I wish it would have because um, now, you know. Easier said than done. Easier, Yeah. Well said. Well said. And, um, yeah. So now, I mean, I think I've, I, I know what it feels like to put everything you got on the line when you're writing checks and you know, families are feeding them their, their kids with the decisions that you make. So um, I can, I can empathize with my clients and I know what it feels like when you're making decisions and you're writing checks, payroll every two weeks, right? right? Like that comes fast. And um, mm-hmm. I think that the experience helped me realize what it feels like to grow, what it feels like to lead a team. Um, and, yeah. you know, I, I know the consequences of when you don't do it right. So, yeah, well, you were talking about this podcast you were listening to. Yeah. Was that before you became an EOS? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to define EOS in a second. Yeah. Tell me the journey. Oh, man. So the the Howard Behar story? Yes. Yeah. 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 So uh, it, it was kind of like it felt like I was like yeah, the Pat Hyben story again. So I really love Ed Milet. It's actually in, I have a vision of doing an interview with him. Yeah. He's one of my favorites. Yeah. I got he to is. meet him live, actually. Yeah. It had to go abundance. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I got to meet him live. Uh, it's yeah. So I, it's like, that's like my, um, my therapy. That's my mm. personal development. That's my, every, you know, I, all the time. Okay. So anyway, so he's, he's interviewing Howard Behar and a lot of people don't know his name, but he was the president of Starbucks, uh, at about 200 or so stores, he came on to run operations. And so he was doing this awesome you know interview with Ed all about people and culture and mentorship and growth. And uh, at the end, Ed, which he always does, he asked a really awesome question. He said, hey, Howard, you know, if somebody wanted you to be their mentor, you know, what advice would you have for them? What what you know, what would you say to them? And so he pretty much says, you know, well, if you don't know where you're going, any road will get you there. So what are your core values? What's your mission? What's your vision? And so he kind of laid out this exercise. It's like the Chester cat. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And so he laid out this exercise. And so something, again, in my spirit was like, just do the work. So I did the exercise. And then I was like, and he put his contact information out there. <laughs> and, you know, uh, so I Perfect. just did the exercise and I sent it to wow. him. So why not? What do I have to lose? Right? Like, I don't I don't have anything to lose. Like, how much of an exercise did he give you? It like, was what, what, How detailed was it? It was pretty good. I mean, it took me a good month. Oh, my. It, and it wasn't like it was a lot, but like, you know, my mission my vision, my core values, you know, the first crack at it, I probably liked 10% of what I wrote, but then I revisited it, revisited it, you know, and I kind of kept iterating and got it to a point where I said, this is like now, you know, I said this earlier, I said, core values can either be like super fluffy stickers or they can be the bedrock of who you are. Um, And so I got it to a point where I really felt like they were solid and they were me and I sent it to them. So I don't really expect I'm going to get a response. I'm hoping I will, but I'm not expecting it. And so about 30 days later, um, all of a sudden I get an email and it's a response to the email I sent. It's like, it's Howard. He's like, Hey, these look great. We should talk. He's very short in his emails. Like I've learned that like, it's like six words or max. And so I'm like, Oh my gosh. Yes. Anytime, any place. He's like, let's set up a zoom. So one thing I, 
I, I realized, and I'll go through the values because like this is like, you know, this journal, this is like these values are like my biggest asset because what I realized was when I still had all these challenges to work through, these values are what got me through it. Um, but what I realized when we talked was, and I said, this is where I kind of had some revelations was he is so positive oriented. And I didn't realize how negatively oriented I was, especially with all the baggage. I'm like, well, if I do this, these five things might go wrong. Or if I try this, well, why would I be able to do that? Look at what I, the mess I made with this other business. And I'll never forget. He was kind of like, so tell me about yourself. What's your story? And I told him about Renew It, all this like kind of gripping, ruthless experience. He's like, huh, well, you wouldn't be the first person who went through something like that. So what's next? Like he just totally, he didn't dismiss it, but he kind of like, he framed it in a way. Mm. Um, and I said, I felt like I noticed the negative and ne negativity in me bubble out of me talking with him. Mm. So I'll give you a little bit extra because I didn't share this with you guys. So again, we talk and he gives me, he said, Hey, here's two books you should read. I said, okay, if he's going to give me a, a book, stop, I'm going to do it. Like if I got like, I got. So one of the books he gave me was Richest, uh, I'm sorry, The Greatest Salesman in the World by mm. Og Mandino. Uh, oh, my buddy. Yeah. Old school. I read yeah. that book all the time. I give it out to my staff. So I read it. Oh, it's a great book, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah. watch this. So I read it and I'm on a run just kind of trying like, how do I respond to Howard and like show him who I am? I didn't feel like I could say, ah, I read the book and this is what I got. But in the book, there's the 10 scroll. Oh, yeah. Right. And so the challenge is read the 10 scrolls. One for one month each or something like that. Three times a day. For 30 days, quietly in the morning, quietly in the afternoon, out loud at night, I'm running and my gut is just like, I'm going to do the scrolls. So I, I, I kick it off. And every 30 days, I would send him a picture of the scroll with my tally marks on it. Hello, this is Josh. And Melanie and I and the entire team of Accountable Equity are extremely excited to tell you that Learn and Grow August 24th at Renault Winery will probably be the best one ever, largest one. We're bringing keynote speakers in like Directed IRA, one of the biggest uh, Directed IRA groups in America, Matt Sorensen, CEO, famous podcaster. He's gonna be coming in. We'll have Mike Pine, the strategist behind all the incredible tax savings strategies within the funds at Accountable Equity and so many more. We can't wait to introduce you to them. And by the way, there'll be three or four other surprises We'll have culinary experiences, entertainment experiences, and a lot of fun. Oh, there may even be massages. Can't wait to get you. Sign up below. We appreciate you. Hey, this is Matt Sorensen, author of the Self-Directed IRA Handbook, CEO at Directed IRA. You're listening to the best podcast, the Cap Lacking Podcast. First month, he's like, good job. Second month, he's like, oh, yeah, great, great work. Third month, you know, fourth month, fifth month, he's like, wow, wow, you're, you're sticking with this. I get all the way through. I finished them 300 days. I mean, it was tough. That's, a, I mean, that's a that commitment. Is so tough. It was so, there were so many times I almost slipped, like I, I'm passing out, you know, hanging out with the kids. And I'm like 11 o'clock. And I'm like, oh, I got to, I got to read the scrolls. Um, <laughs> so, anyways, I get back to him and he said, I got to be honest with you, Jason. He's like, I've mentored a lot of people. Like, you imagine how many employees and so forth Starbucks have had his, his career. He's like, I have never had somebody take this and do it like this. So I feel like I earned another mentor doing that. But, that, yeah, so that was the the Howard Behar story. Yeah, what's one or two of the scrolls? Uh, I'll so, greet this day with love in my heart. I'll greet this day. With I'll heart. I'll strive until I succeed. I will persist until I, I am nature's greatest miracle. Yep, yep. Yeah, I mean, where I will where act now. I will act now. With, yeah, um, I mean, listen, I got them. I mean, I read them every the single day. The desert ends, green grass grows. Look, I summarized them and I sent this to him. This is what I sent him after I did all the survey. So that is such a powerful book. I read these every morning. The irony of wow. everything, if you guys haven't read this book yet, The Greatest Salesman, is, you know, the the method in the book is that being a salesman will destroy your, you know, it can destroy you because the amount of rejection hmm. will break you. So what he says is, why, you know, read these scrolls for 30 days because yeah. they're going to enrich your character. Yeah. But I've never met anybody who does it because it, it's like you can read the whole book in two hours. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. The it's, book, it's like yeah. a magazine. It's a little book. Yeah. It's like a little magazine sized book. You can read it in two hours. And he's like, stop right there and read the same thing. Right. Same yeah. pages for 30 days, three times. I'm like, yeah. I actually have. I it. actually have never met anybody who's done it. Yeah. I, it's I'm, usually sitting on my shelf. I actually have the scrolls that I've marked in my back carrying with me because that. Can I mean, you do them all? 
Yeah. I don't. I don't think I can do them all. Do yeah, them all. It was tough. Well, I got. I mean, I mean, listen. So today I begin a new life. Right. I can read you some of the highlights. Please. Two. I will greet this day with love in my heart. Three. I will persist until I succeed. Four. I'm nature's greatest. Nature's greatest miracle. Five. I will live this day as if it's my last. Six. Today I will be master of my emotions. Seven. I will laugh at the world. Eight. I will multiply my value a hundredfold. Nine, this is my favorite one. I will act now. And 10, I will pray for guidance. Yeah, and they're Love. just so uplifting. Yeah. Mm. They're so uplifting. Yeah. Um, there's the one that says, when I meet you as a merchant, yeah. I will say silently to myself, I love you. Yeah. I love you. I love you. Then I will present my goods to you and you will not be but able to feel my love. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one of the ones I so love is it says powerful. I, one of the things I say, it says, I will shed only tears of sweat for those of sadness or remorse or frustration are of no value in the marketplace. While each smile can be exchanged for gold. Wow. And each kind word spoken from my heart can build a castle. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I didn't know we were going to do that. But that book changes that. A yeah. lot of people's lives. Yeah. Uh, for me, for sure. Nobody has done what you've done. And I want to jump forward to what you you're doing for our company yeah. today as an EOS implementer. Mm -hmm. You know, I just John drove all the way out here to do a live in person. Thank you, John. Um, absolutely Thank video you. with all of us in the world. But Joe, John, you know, you probably know this, but Jason and I just spent four or five hours, six hours together, two days in a row. Yeah, about to do it again tomorrow. Yeah, and I'll be I'll be present tomorrow. That baby, let's let's get tomorrow. Seven hours going. So we're gonna grind through the tough questions. Yeah. Good doing the work. Yeah. And I appreciate everything you're doing. Why did you decide to go into that work? Yeah. So it was, it was kind of coincided. Wait a second. Wait a second. Is. Yeah. yeah. Let's explain yeah. what EOS is. Yeah. And yeah. then, and then we'll get into it. Yeah, sure. So EOS stands for entrepreneurial operating system. And so the goal is to help companies get what we call strong and vision traction, healthy. So vision is crystal clear where are we going, how we're going to get there. Traction is the daily and the weekly discipline and accountability you need to get there. And healthy is just building a more cohesive team where you enjoy the people that you're working with. Um, we say vision without traction is hallucination. You know, a lot of times you have a big vision, but if you can't execute, it's just, you know, and that was, that was a lot of what we struggled with was I had all these ideas. I had all these, this vision, but so I checked the box on the compelling, compelling vision side of it, but our execution, right? We, we, that was where we struggled. Um, so I got into it because um, a, if I could help one person not have that walk up the driveway that I had, that's, you know, work well done. Um, the second is at the same time, another go abundance brother, uh, Gary Jonas. <laughs> love, who, love Gary. Yeah. Uh, who doesn't love Gary? Um, I'm in a mastermind group with him where we hold each other accountable for health, wealth relationships. So around the time Gary knew it was going down. Uh, he said, Hey, I'm doing this thing. It's called, he's, he was implementing EOS in his business. Oh, wow. It was back then. Back then. Yeah. Cause it's really popular now. Yeah. Yeah. 2016. It was not popular. Yeah. He was, he was, and we were like, well, okay, well, Gary, I mean, he's a straight shooter, right? He's super oh, yeah, guy. Yeah. He's not messing around with BS. And he was coming back to our group weekly saying, guys, this is working. There's something here. So we actually ended up running our mastermind group off of it mm -hmm. using the tools. Mm -hmm. So I, I just I saw the impact it made for him. I saw how it could have been beneficial to renew it. And I saw what it did for us on the tool. So I, I just, I fell in love with it. I, I, you know, as you can tell, like when I'm in the room with you guys, like I'm energized about it and I, I like it because it's simple, it's practical and it, it, it kind of brings all the goal setting and all the accountability stuff we've done for so many years into a, you know, into place. Honestly, you know, every single business owner that implements EOS has an that has an EOS implementer like yourself, Jason. I have never heard one person say if they did it correctly, it didn't work. Yeah, it just it adds rocket fuel to people's businesses, and that's period, end of story. And so I am so excited that you are a part of all of Josh's businesses. And, and I'd like to take a little bit of credit. Yeah, you should. Matt Donnelly too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I'd like to take a little bit of credit that I, I bridged the gap. No, it's uh, between, between the two of these guys and, and, and took it to the finish line. Yeah. That's an honor. Um, I, I take it really seriously. Like I said, I know like when you are running a business, it's as close to your life as any other part it of it is, yeah. you know? And so, 
Uh, I take it very seriously. You know, that's why I, you know, when I'm in the room, I, 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 you know, I take, I take so much pride in making sure that the teams are getting what they need out of it. That, um, you know, I say, you know, we can go as long as you want. I'm built for whatever you need to do. And so, you know, some, it's just, it's, it's a pleasure. It is. It's an, uh, you have a great, mo- mo- what do you call it? The, the mo- moderator, you're the, mo- okay. or the facilitator, right? Oh, yeah, you're the facilitator sure. yeah. and it's good. You, you try to discipline the group. You try to get them back on track and you have a great way about you. So I, we're very excited about it. I had, uh, I had, uh, Matt Donnelly's partner, Mike Soroka, sure. he said, you have a way of being assertive without being obnoxious. Yeah. And I really like it. I was like, I, that, I'll take that. That's I, I agree with you. You do. Yeah. Thank you. you do. Yeah. And um, it does help the credibility you have from your history and your background. And uh, we had a fun time today doing core values. Uh, yeah. And it's funny how these things, when you're not in the middle of doing the work, might seem fluffy, you know, yeah. and you give a whole speech about let's not let them be fluffy. Let's, and you have it, you teach, by the way, in case if you haven't done EOS, uh, folks, and if you're listening, mm-hmm. Melanie and I just went on a big event and really refocused our heart towards the gift of, you know, being, um, trying to be a gift to our people that work with us and, and, and use it as our ministry. And the point that the, it was John Maxwell was teaching mm-hmm. us this and he's like, you're people deserve good leaders mm-hmm. and good leadership. I mean, leadership's not easy and you have to work at it. And, you know, the guy's written 37 books. Oh, so man. clearly he, he, he believes you should read 37 books on yeah. leadership. Yeah. So it's hard. Um, but, my my thought of when we went to see him and when I sit with you is it is actually um hmm it's funny, you know, you're get into business, you think, well, we're gonna do a great job for the client. Melanie's observation over the last seven years or so has been how much good we can do for the people that work with us. Yeah. You know, appreciating them, showing them dignity, giving them peace of mind about the productivity that they're doing. Yeah. Anyway, I feel like I feel like I wish we would have done it sooner. Sure. Thank you for everything you're doing. Yeah. And, and the reason why I like core values is because when they're done right, is that you use them every day, multiple times a day in terms of how you make decisions. You know, like, for example, mine, and I got this through the exercise with Howard Behar is brave, kind, curious, helpful with extreme ownership. So any point during the day, any decision I'm making, any action I'm taking is filtered through those values. Um, and then so when Carly and I and the family, the kids were all looking at our, each other in the mirror, we're saying, hey, you know, in this family, we're brave. So if you got something tough, you, you made a mistake, let's hit it head on, you know, if we're kind. So it's just, you know, it it's changed my life, to be honest. Yeah. And, you know, we all go through things all day, every day, right? There's when someone gets mad, it's, it, it, you know, <laughs> it wasn't that they got mad at this one particular moment. It was the build up 50 moments yeah. before then. And that just caused the volcanic explosion yeah. on whoever, or whatever that situation was. Now, if you're doing these 10 scrolls three mm-hmm. times a day, yeah. you're <laughs> constantly pivoting and reframing your yeah. mind yeah. to oh, yeah. focus on gratitude. So guys, if you don't do this, think about changing your mindset and do it. Because it's going to constantly, actually, I'll tell you a quick personal story. Yeah. Earlier today, I got upset. I, I'm not going to get into details, but I got upset about a situation and it wasn't that particular situation. There was other stresses involved in different stuff in business. But my wife, Christine, looks at me and she goes, John, this is so small. Think about how much we have to be grateful for and let it go. Yeah. That was beautiful accountability. Yeah. 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 I heard, uh, I heard some, uh, too large for worry, too noble for anger, too strong for fear. Can you do that one more time? What What is it saying? Too large for worry. What is? I, I'm, it's just like a concept, like a saying, like you say to yourself, like, Hey, I'm too large for worry, too noble for anger, too strong for fear. It was Wait. a quote. I can't remember. It was a football coach. <laughs> Yeah, but that's hard to do, man. Oh, of course. It's, I mean, and there's no such thing as perfection, right? Like yeah. you, you're never going to be perfect, but. Um, I, I kind of look at the core values as like guardrails and, you know, again, plus, plus, minus, minus. Am I, am I doing this most of the time? Um, and if I'm not, somebody call me out on it, right? Yeah. Like if we Tough. agreed we're going to be brave, let's, you know, let's discuss it. Wow. Yeah. I think it's been great getting to know you. How can we follow up uh, and let people meet you, buddy? Yeah. Um, LinkedIn is big. Jason Gennady on LinkedIn. And then. Why don't you spell your name? For yeah. Me? 
Jason, J A S O N, and then last name Janati, J A N N A T I. I've never said it the way you say, it, but I like it. It's very stylish. It's <laughs> Janati. It's Janati. Janati. Yeah. So LinkedIn, where where else? LinkedIn, and then um, yeah, that's probably the best place to find me. Yeah, LinkedIn. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. yeah don't 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 coming. look me up on LinkedIn because I I probably won't respond. I it's a it's a, it's the lowest in the bucket for me. But is it? Yeah. A lot of people love it. I, love, love it I do love it. I'm, I'm very Jason loves it. It works. It's great. Yeah. Hey guys, we appreciate you. Yeah. Good job. Thank Cheers, you guys. Brother. I appreciate you. Thank you. Bam straight. We just got, yeah, to buddy. End, we got to the end of another great show. And everyone listening right now, you're the family. Family and friends, thanks for staying till the end. That was so fun. And hey, hit the like, hit subscribe. We're here to serve you guys. That's why we're doing this show. Josh is not paying me. I'm doing this off of my quote unquote sweat equity because we want to make a difference in your life. And then that ripple effect will continue to touch the world. Hey, amen, brother. Please check us out on capitalhacking.com, all the social media threads. And yes, I know you've probably already sent this episode to one of your best friends. Thank you. We <laughs> love you. Just, just go right into your iPhone, hit the plus symbol. We'll talk to you later. See you next week. Share, share, share.